Now, WGEM Sports with Garrett Tiaz. Yesterday, the IHSAA announced how fall sports, specifically football, will be handled with a seven-week regular season and all teams qualifying for the postseason. During the seven-week season, teams will have the option of scheduling five, six, or seven games within those given weeks. Week one and two will be optional game dates. Opponents' location and participation may be determined by the schools with 11-player football teams. With all teams qualifying for postseason, brackets will consist of six rounds for each class. The IHSAA will determine postseason pairings with geography, quality, and team availability as primary considerations. With practices set to start on August 10th and competition on August 27th, Central Lee Athletic Director Jerry Ireland explained how he's handling the upcoming season. Just got to uh, be prepared in any other equipment, the essential equipment that we might need, like for football, you know, face shields uh, on the football helmets, things like that. So I'm just trying to prepare just like all the other ADs. With Iowa-Missouri high school sports set to start on time, Illinois high school teams are still waiting to hear a decision as players and coaches want to know what this upcoming season will look like and if there will be one. Yesterday, the IHSA was set to meet with State Board of Education and the Department of Public Health. Craig Anderson, the IHSA Executive Director, said he does hope to announce some outcomes Wednesday after the IHSA board meeting. In Macomb, Coach Tony Weston is looking to get his Bomber team back on the right track. After going 0-9 last season, the Bombers look to turn the page as they will visit West Hancock for their first game next month on the 28th. Coach Weston explains what his team is doing to prepare for the season under the current rules. Honestly, we're, we're really all about controlling what we can control. So right now, we're just going through our paces, trying to put together pieces of our offense, trying to put together pieces of our defense, making sure that we understand our assignments, doing everything that's mental and cere cerebral, and making sure that, that we understand those reps. And, and that's really where our headspace is right now. Due to the current guidelines and no announcement from the state yet, teams still can't fully prepare for regular season games. And the Bombers left tackle and defensive end talked about the possibility of only having a couple weeks to get completely ready for game games and how practices are currently going. Um, it'd be, I, I don't know. I, I think it'd be hard, but I think we could be able to pull it off. You know, it's everybody coming together. It's just awesome to get out here with our guys with everything going on, you know, it's just, positive that we get stuff going and try to get our mind off everything. It was day one for the men and women's city golf tournament. The big two day event, two -day event is being played at Westview Golf Course as golfers from all over the area look to take home first place. First up in the ladies division after day one, Crystal Bergtorp holds the lead after shooting a 75 Saturday. She is closely trailed by Saya Giesendorfer and Lacey Novosel who shot a 78 and an 80. The three will tee off Sunday morning bright and early at 640. In the men's division, Quincy Notre Dame and soon to be Illinois State Redbird Alex McCullough is at the top of the leaderboard, but he is sharing first place with Ryan Schwanke as they both shot a 67 on the first day. However, they do not have a lot of room to breathe because Adam Pfeiffer and Blaze Haxel are both one stroke behind the two leaders. The four golfers will tee off together tomorrow at 1030. Good luck to all and hit them straight. Baseball is officially back. The 60 game season is underway and in a condensed season, every game counts, especially division games. And we had two big ones in the NL Central today. First up is the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Birds won opening day, so they're looking for another one. Adam Wainwright on the mound, the veteran. Bottom of the first, all tied up at zero, but with nobody on and two outs. Paul Goldschmidt decides to change that. He gets a hold of this one. He sends it deep. It goes off the big Mackland sign. And just like that, one swing, Goldschmidt gets his first run of the home run of the season, giving the Birds the 1-0 lead. Bottom of the fourth, now all tied up at one, both ru with runners on the corners for Dexter Fowler. And Fowler hits a line drive up the middle. It will drop in front of the center fielder. DeJong scores easily from third, and Fowler gives the Birds the early 2-1 lead. Top six, one out, and Adam Wainwright had the old Uncle Charlie working today. He gets Josh Bells to swing at the curveball in the dirt. Wainwright would go six innings, giving up only one run, three hits, and he fanned five in his season debut as the Birds would go on to win the game by the score of 9-1. to one. They are now 2-0. The Chicago Cubs look for back-to-back -back wins themselves after beating the Brewers Friday. The two teams were back at it Saturday in a day game. You Darvish on the bump for the Cubs. Top four runners on second and third for Ben Gamble. And he puts a charge into this one. He hits it 
in the right center field gap. It rolls its way to the wall and both runners would score. Meanwhile, Gamble, who's hustling, digs for third and he slides in safely. Gamble's two RBI triple gives the Brewers the 3-1 lead. 4-1 now, bottom of the fifth, and a runner on for Kyle Schwarber, and there it goes. It's deep and over the wall. Schwarber crushes the fastball over the right center field fence. His first of the season, and he makes it a 4-3 ball game. However, the Cubs wouldn't cross home the rest of the game, and after a Christian Yelich home runs, the Brewers would extend their lead, and the Cubs would fall to Milwaukee by the score of 8-3. The same two clubs will be in action Sunday afternoon at Wrigley. First pitch is set for 1.20 p.m. Be sure to listen to the game on WGM Sports Radio, ESPN 1440, 98.9. The Cardinals will host the Pirates again Sunday. First pitch at Bush is set for 1.15 p.m. Listen to the game live on News Talk 105 WGM.